Hi, I'm Daphne and I'm here at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals here in Chicago. So let's go take a look at some awesome cars. So you have all the creature comforts, yet you can uh, you have the horsepower to go to car shows, enjoy it on a daily basis, but it really turns people's heads. Usually 10,000 miles, okay. and all the options that you see are the options to the best of my knowledge that it was, when it came off the assembly line. What? This being a Hemi car was one of the last three two that were built. Wow. And being a late built, it has brush trim rings on it. The uh, car is originally from California, is where it was titled at, okay. and been in California most of its life. I, it's originally black with the red interior. Mm -hmm. um, I treat, try to keep the car as much original as I can. Three, mm -hmm. stripped the paint, repainted it. Wow. We built the motor, trans. Mm -hmm. um, the interior is original. So we kept everything as original as we could. I wanted to fall in love with it. She wanted some water. I know. I want to drive it home. So um, can you tell me a little bit about the, the wheels here? The wheels are uh, a US mag. Uh, mm -hmm. It took me a little while to find something that was a steel wheel that is, that is chrome. So how long have you had it for again? She bought it in 1972, 1972, so she's had it longer so than she's had me. <laughs> but it... <laughs> wow, that's really cool. What attracted me to this car was obviously the black color. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to find an original black 69 Camaro. They, they didn't make a lot of them. But it's a solid wheel without the trim ring. Okay. So it gives you a deeper dish and it gives you wider tires on it. And uh, so it handles a lot better. When you're driving, you know, the, you can it makes it look like there's you know light coming out of the hood um, but it also helps to kind of accentuate like what's under the engine compartment air conditioning lines the radiator hoses all these components everything on there is new old stock um, you just very hard to find those kind of parts these days i, I try to drive it as often as i can mm -hmm. um, i didn't build it to look at it i built it to drive it to me driving them is more of an excitement than yeah. just looking at it. So I see you have painted the hood of this car, or uh, from a car. Mm -hmm. um, so the inspiration was the Cubs winning the World Series just true. recently. Yeah. This car actually has a Proteco plate. So it's actually a true 71 car. This actually car retains its original motor, transmission, rear end, carburetor, and distributor. Wow. Those are specific to this car. Here, about unless anybody's laid eyes on it. Wow. Some guys are kind of weird, like that they won't let you look their stuff. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, very, very nice. In fact, uh, a few weeks ago, we were down, the car was down at uh, Don Garrett's show in uh, Florida and finished uh, both on Saturday and Sunday best in class. Wow. So, real proud of that. Hey, Dave. So what did you bring here today? It's a 1970 Plymouth Sport Fury GT with a factory 446 barrel. Wow, it's beautiful. Muscle cars, anybody could go in and order one through the showroom mm -hmm. floor. You spec it out, ordered it, and it mm -hmm. got delivered. Supercar actually had to be built by somebody. And Nikki okay. started that. They were the largest Chevy dealer in the world and based out of Chicago, Illinois. And uh, it's been sitting in stories for maybe uh, 10 to 12, 12 years. Okay. And uh, decided uh, about a year and a half ago to get it out and take it from a 169,000 wore out car to uh, what you see today. I uh, found the car in a, uh, actually it's near Staunton, Illinois, okay. in a, uh, almost a field. We brought a recently finished 69 Charger I built for a client in Michigan. Uh, kind of a nostalgia, a little bit of a nostalgia story uh, involved with the build. Wow! So was this the original? Uh, no, the original. The, the original color was white. It was a. Pa it is a pace car because uh, okay. the original engine was a 396 turbojet. Hi, I'm 
Daphne, and today I'm here with Paul Christofferson. Awesome, Paul. So what type of beauty did you bring to the car show today? We brought a recently finished 69 Charger I built for a client in Michigan. Uh, kind of a nostalgia, a little bit of a nostalgia story uh, involved with the build. Uh, it was to match a friend of his car, uh, a car that belongs to a friend of his. Uh -huh. um, he, the whole theme with the car was to keep it totally stock appearing, but upgrade the suspension, brakes, and steering, and uh, driveline. Uh, we were able to just kind of figure out the best way to do that. It was a lot of challenges involved, uh, uh, keeping it totally stock appearing, but then adding cruise control, uh, Bluetooth, uh, the new wow. 6.4 SRT Hemi engine, overdrive automatic. Wow. Just an awesome car, and uh, thankfully Jim understands that it takes a lot of time to do a car like this and, and let us kind of just do the best we could. Awesome. So how long did it take to complete the restoration of this car? It was a year, but uh, during that year there was periods where it, it was waiting for parts or something, but a total of about 1,500 hours. Wow, wow. Well, it's, it's amazing. You did an amazing job. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so what, what type of paint is this? This is a beautiful color. It's a two-stage urethane uh, base coat, clear coat, and it is the correct uh, TX9 code 69 Charger black color. Okay. And, uh, yeah, let's take a look at the interior. Everything is tried to stay very subtle with everything, adding speakers to the doors and keeping it subtle, uh, increasing the bolsters on the seats, uh, stock appearing radio with the Bluetooth, uh, factory shifter uh, integrated into the five speed automatic transmission just works perfectly. Wow. Uh, Dakota digital gauges in the stock locations. Uh, 510 horsepower, 510 torque. Wow. Uh, it is just an absolute blast to drive. We uh, did a lot of little things too, like handmade the seat belts wow. uh, to keep a shoulder harness but not have to use the factory seat belts that, that go up in there. Mm -hmm. um, wow, that's really neat. It's very, very nice. Air ice cold air. Uh, <laughs> there's not a squeak or a rattle in this car. Wow. It's just amazing. I mean, it, it goes just right up to 110, 20, 30 mile an hour, whatever you want. It's, wow. Uh, I'm sure he would, well, maybe he wish he could take it to the track. <laughs> yeah, well, he's going to use it, uh, I think, and in, in they're going to they're going to use it in the Copper State Thousand Road Rally. Wow. And that's part of the backstory and the inspiration for this build is his friend and my, my good friend, uh, Bob, uh, when they finished college in 72, Bob had a black, had and still has a black charger just like this, a real RT, 440 automatic car. Wow. Uh, in 014, they used the black charger in uh, the Copper State 1000 Road Rally, and mm -hmm. then in and they won the Spirit Award for the backstory ah. of them going to college together, tearing around on the streets in, in Bob's <laughs> car in 72, uh -huh. and then going their separate ways for 40 years. Wow. And then uh, chatting again, and after 40 years, deciding to do the road rally. Mm -hmm. And then that inspired the build of this car. Wow, that's amazing. That's a really cool backstory. I yeah. love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that they got back together after 40 years and they came up with the idea to, to do this. <laughs> yeah, that's important. That's really important. So can you tell me a little about the, the wheels? Uh, we, we decided to use, well, Bob has 15 by 8 Magnum 500s on his car and, and Jim wanted exactly the same. Okay. And uh, um, that, so that's what we stuck with. We, we had to keep it what, what Jim wanted. And uh, there's lots of features on the car too. Uh, Handmade sheet metal air box. This lid comes off to service the air cleaner. Uh, a lot of sheet metal work underneath to, for the bigger transmission. Handmade frame rail connectors that are metal finished to the bottom of the car. The underside looks like the top. Wow. 
Every nut and bolt is plated, the appropriate platings. Nothing, none of the hardware is sandblasted and painted. All the AC lines, the air conditioning lines come out here, go through the firewall, and then around the front, and then back the other fender well to the air box in the dash to keep it clean looking in here. Uh, I wanted to maintain some of the 1969 integrity with the, the original wiper motor, the, the washer bottle, you know, a stock appearing radiator, but it is a aluminum Griffin four core. Wow. Uh, wrap the headers, uh, just on and on and on and on. It's, it's endless. We deleted the vacuum operated uh, hidden headlights and put electric servos in there just, just for uh, uh, reliability. The uh, brake system? The brake system is a four wheel uh, Willwood disc brake power. Uh, I did elect to use a the Hemi cars and Mopars used an offset bracket here to get the booster away from the motor. I used an offset bracket, but we used we elected to use a dual diaphragm mid 60s Corvette style uh, uh, vacuum booster, and then the Willwood master cylinder, and the brakes just work amazingly well. It, wow! It, uh, and with the, the aftermarket rear suspension. When you hit the brakes hard, it doesn't nosedive, it, it stays level and just stops. Does, okay. does... Speak about the uh, engine. It is a, actually a brand new 2015 uh, crate motor uh, that would be the correct part number for an SRT Challenger. Uh, and then the headers and the computer bring it up to 510 horse and 510 torque. Uh, five speed overdrive automatic. Um, just it's just it's like driving a new SRT Challenger but uh, of course in a 1969 <laughs> wrapping. Wow yeah. that's amazing. Oh can you tell me a little bit about the suspension? Yeah uh, there's a picture of it here. Uh, this is an altercation front end. It's a tubular K member and then you got rack and pinion steering, tubular control arms, and then of course four wheel disc brakes. So what we've upgraded to is, of course, uh, say it again, four wheel discs, rack and pinion, and four wheel coil over suspension. Wow. And it's, uh, it just works very, very well. Handmade, you can't see them in the picture here, but handmade frame rail connectors, uh, hemi torque boxes underneath to stiffen the unibody. Uh, the car just just drives amazing. Um, yeah. I'm very proud of it. I... It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, your company did a great job. Um, can you tell us the name of your company well, and where to find you all? <laughs> I, uh, I got into Mopars in the 70s in high school and uh, been obsessed with them ever since. Okay. I started restoring them in the late 80s for people nice. and uh, dealing in them. And uh, my family said I'm obsessed, so I named the business Paul Christofferson's Mopar Obsession. Oh, that's a cool name. That's great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, no, thank you. And you can check the video out on the YouTube channel, U.S. Classic Muscle Cars. All right. Okay. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs>